Um, another thing we were discussing, you know, in our emails was the uh, recycling because, you know, you were, we are producing huge number of lithium ion batteries. Every company is getting into it. Mercedes, you know, Toyota, GM, Tesla, Nissan. Where do these batteries go after eight to 10 years? You know, that's a big question. And if you don't do, if you don't take care of that, that will be irresponsible of us uh, because then we will affect the environment negatively instead of making it green. It will not be so green. It just uh, so so. There's a huge push for recycling these batteries in a sustainable way. You know, in a way that doesn't harm the environment. So what happens is you get the EVs, right? And this is from a scientific paper. I have linked it here. Uh, and you so you you have the spent batteries here that come out after eight ten years. Or let's say you had you said you had a battery replaced. Um, yes, that battery goes for reconditioning and recycling. Tesla has their own program of you know, reconditioning and recycling it. So they may not crush it and do it, but they may be you know, different. So if 80% if of the pack is good, only 10 or 20% of the pack is bad, then the recycling process will be different. But let's say you know, your capacity has, and the battery capacity has gone down by significant amount, then, then the recycling may be a better process. So basically what happens, you take the battery and then you want to separate out all the constituent elements, iron, aluminum, copper, nickel, the plastic, the metallic jacket casing, the, the electron material, you know, NCM and electrolyte material, that's organic toxic material. So you want to separate them out in a way that is that can be reused, right? So there is a there's a lot of research going on. Some universities in Boston or uh, Worcester actually got some grants to perform that that kind of research. So this is how the recycling happens. You get the spent lithium-ion batteries. If it is uh, significantly degraded, then you crush them such that um, all the parts you know come apart. Then the plastic shells, the metal, metallic jacket, and the cathode material, the current collectors, right? You get all that stuff, and then whatever you, the, the important stuff that you need, the cathode, the nickel, the cobalt, aluminum, and then some of those material will be subject to treatment, pre-treatments where they're screened, and then the ultrasonic washing separates out based on the density, based on the material, based on... Uh, what can be reused or not. So the, once the outer jacket is taken off, then the inner part will be subject to the screening and washing. And then we end up with three kinds of materials grouped together. Plastics will go into one bin, the electron materials, whether it is nickel will go into the nickel bin, the cobalt will go into the cobalt bin. If it is completely amalgamated, it's pretty hard. Then the electron materials will be, you know, it's like a clump, a uh, cluster of these materials that will be together. And then the current collectors, aluminum, copper, current collectors will be in the other bin. Then they're subject to a very vigorous hydrometallurgical and pyrometallurgical. Hydro means you use very strong acids um, that can leach the material. Basically, you know, you use sulfuric acid, or hydrochloric acid, trifluoroacetic acid, citric acid. You pick the kind of acid that will dissolve only the material you want. It won't touch, affect the other materials. You, so you pick the kind of acid that is good for, let's say, aluminum or copper or cobalt or nickel. Then you leach that away. And then you have a you know, slurry or an acid which contains dissolved nickel or cobalt aluminum. And then you have pyrometallurgical processes where you can, you know, it is further using heat. And once you have done that, then you have a container full of, let's say, acid that has cobalt in it. Then you subject it to chemical precipitation or uh, electrochemical deposition where you are able to extract some of those cathode in a, in a, in a, in a reversible way. Uh, so once you extract those nickel or cobalt, then that may not be as good as the starting material of the battery. You know, you, we saw in a slide where it came out of the mine, they refined it, and it was pure. So the cobalt coming out of this structure may not be as efficient or pure as the initial starting material, but that's an area of research that is happening, how to 
get really high quality cobalt and nickel and electrolytes or other materials from the recycling. I think this is this is really insightful because this is one of the things that detractors of electric vehicles uh, say is a problem, which is you know once the battery is has, has run the course of its life in the vehicle, it just gets tossed in the landfill. But but according to what you're sharing here, it's not true. It gets recycled and reused. So I guess the question is. Once this, once the materials are recycled and they're broken apart, where where does that stuff go? And what, since it's not as pure as as at the beginning of the battery's life, those materials, what can they be used for? Um, are, are there are there you know really easy use cases uh, oh, sure. for recycled materials like that? Sure, you know nickel is used in steel in the steel industry. Right, and uh, cobalt is used in other in steel industry also, and it is also used in the, for making magnets. It is used in nickel is also used in making magnets. So there, and nickel is also nickel cobalt materials are also used in in catalysis in the petroleum industry and many other industries. For uh, um, from as a material scientist, I know nickel and cobalt have extensive usage in the metallic, you know, industry, especially steel industry, where you know you you don't really care about ultra pure nickel or ultra pure cobalt, as long as it is below above certain threshold level, you're good, and uh, and it can be used in, uh, uh, for example, you know, let's say construction industry. You know, construction industry, uh, they. For that steel, you know, you need some dopants to strengthen the steel. They use chromium, they use nickel. So in all those cases, this kind of materials can be used. It need not necessarily go back to the lithium ion battery. It can be used for different applications. Basically, we are trying to minimize, you know, uh, one usage case where you just use it for one per application and throw it out. Once it is done, it can be used for different applications. That's a better approach for recycling. So, uh, as of now, I, I don't think it is used for batteries right away, but it is. There are tons of other applications for in the chemical industry and metal industry, metal metallurgy industry. That's great, and I think re recycling it is is far better than it it appears like. Uh, it's far better than than using an internal combustion engine where the power that that petroleum is burned up and comes out the the exhaust and into the air that we breathe. Right, right, absolutely, you know. I sh I'm sharing the link. The, the citation is here for the paper. It is all about the progresses and research in uh, in recycling of lithium ion batteries after the you know from EV. So you know I'll share the link. The the readers can look through this. There's so much research happening in this area as well. You know it's an exciting time to be.